The New York Times reports today, on June 16th, that Donald Trump has made a headline generating threat. The headline of the New York Times story reads, the radical strategy behind Trump's promise to go after Biden. Let's talk about that story. And let's talk about the meaningless headline of the New York Times. It follows conservatives with close ties to Donald J. Trump are laying out a paradigm-shifting legal rationale to erase the Justice Department's independence from the president. That's how the New York Times puts it. The New York Times has a certain conceit, an arrogance, if you will. The premise is that when they report it, it becomes news. It doesn't so much matter when it is that Donald Trump first made the threat. The act that matters is the act of reporting. And the giveaway is that phrase, headline generating threats. What are the threats? The threats are simple. Donald Trump is declaring that he will use the awesome powers of the office of the American presidency to seek retribution and revenge against his political opponents. He seeks to lock them up. He seeks to smash the system that has imposed a premise that he doesn't very much like on him. And it's this, that no person in the United States of America is above the law. What Donald Trump is promising is a reign where he stands singularly, not only above the law, but as the law. Donald Trump's candidacy is an assertion that he will be the state, that he will be the law, that he will be the truth. How does that sound? This is antithetical to every concept of Americanism that has ever been. The United States of America, an imperfect nation, is a place where freedom of speech, of conscience, matter. What Donald Trump is saying with his threats, that because he has been held accountable, he seeks to break the institutions. Imagine the conservative party, the Republican Party in the United States, a party whose entire existence is premised on the preservation, the conservation of the tenets of the American Revolution has become the main vessel for the rise of a wannabe American dictator, an American Mussolini. That is what Trump is offering. Listen to the sick words of Lindsey Graham. Democrats want to destroy his life because they fear him. And from my point of view, from my point of view, conservatism is in good hands with President Donald Trump, and that's his biggest crime. Conservatism is in good hands with Donald Trump. Well, it may be from where Lindsey Graham sits, but if conservatism is in good hands with Donald Trump atop of it, what that means is America is under very grave threat. When Abraham Lincoln came to Gettysburg to deliver a short speech, what he said there reconsecrated the purpose of America. What he said there was the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. A great war was fought, and since then, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Americans, mostly young men, have laid down their lives so that we and our children 
can live pursuing happiness in peace and prosperity with the hope that tomorrow will be better than today. What Donald Trump stands for is a shattering of that hope, the strangling of faith and belief in representative government. And once again, the New York Times doesn't get it. Take again the headline, the radical strategy to go after Biden. It's not a radical strategy. It's a plan, a premeditated plot to erase the rule of law, American democracy, and liberty, to imprison those that sought to challenge Donald Trump's sense of entitlement to power, which is unearned because the American people rejected him from it. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family. Name a special prosecutor. And all others involved with the destruction of our elections, our borders, and our country itself. They're destroying our country. And when I'm reelected, and we will get reelected, we have no choice. We're not going to have a country anymore. I will totally obliterate the deep state. We will obliterate the deep state. And we know who they are. I know exactly who they are. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silent. And I am the only one that can save this nation because you know they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way, and I will never be moving. Now, it's important to understand when Donald Trump talks about the deep state, what it is that he's talking about. What he's talking about is elected representative American government. He's talking about smashing the FBI. He's talking about breaking the Department of Justice. He is explicitly talking about imprisoning those that stand in his way. This is not a banana republic. It's certainly not Trumpistan. In America, we have a freedom of speech, a freedom of conscience, a freedom of religion, and we have every damn right to oppose Donald Trump without fear of our government coming with a knock on the door in the middle of the night to say, we're taking you away for crimes that maybe will be announced later at a trial that is predetermined by the head of state. We will never live in that country. The majority of Americans will not submit to it. But it is important to understand the clarity with which Donald Trump is speaking about this vision, and not for the first time. Let's continue reading from the New York Times story. Mr. Trump's message was that the Justice Department charged him only because he is Mr. Biden's political opponent, so he would invert that supposed politicization in reality, under Attorney General Merrick Garland, two Trump-appointed prosecutors are already investigating Mr. Biden's handling of classified documents and the financial dealings of his son, Hunter. But by suggesting the prosecutors investigating the Bidens were not, quote, real, end quote, Mr. Trump appeared to be promising his supporters that he would appoint an ally who would bring charges against his political enemies, regardless of the facts. The New York Times phrases this as Mr. Trump appeared. Mr. Trump is being perfectly clear, absolutely explicit. He couldn't be more clear if he tattooed it on the foreheads of the New York Times correspondents who authored the story. 
The story continues. Mr. Trump's promise fits into a larger movement on the right to gut the FBI, overhaul a Justice Department, quote, conservatives, end quote, claim has been, quote, weaponized, end quote, against that, and abandon the norm, which many Republicans view as a facade, that the department should operate independently from the president. Let's unpack this paragraph. Besides the fever swamp and the conspiracy fantasies, where is the evidence that the Justice Department has been weaponized against conservatives? It is not true. It is a lie, an utter fantasy. The purpose of the lie is also perfectly clear. Trumpism like all autocratic, fascistic political movements allied with extremists that rely on extremism, that rely on intimations of violence, that seek to topple democracy. Victimization and grievance are as fundamental to the survival of MAGA as air and water or to animals on Earth. The question is not, should the Department of Justice operate independently from the President of the United States? The President has broad discretion in directing the Department of Justice, setting its priorities. What the President must not do in a country where the rule of law is supreme is interfere in influence the direction and course of prosecutions. In a country where freedom of speech, religion, and conscience are sacrosanct, opposition to the president and to the powerful is a birthright in America. It should never be a cause for fear of prosecution. What Donald Trump seeks to do is to strip America of its most fundamental values so that when he is in power, he enjoys the prerogatives of men like Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and Viktor Orban, who have strangled the free media in their societies. There's something important to understand about autocratic movements, about totalitarian systems. Everything that happened in Nazi Germany was legal under German law. The Nazis were assiduous about making sure that everything they did was legal under German law. They were fanatical about it. The stripping of citizenship, the confiscation of Jewish property, all of it happened under the law. In January of 1942, as the Nazi empire was ascendant and the leaders of the Reich met in Wannsee to plan the final solution, the murder of Europe's Jews. Most of the people in the room were lawyers, experts in German law, including architects of the Nuremberg Laws. It's important to understand radical legal theories attached to totalitarian and autocratic movements that seek to justify the handing of power to an executive who can unilaterally use that power to punish as he sees fit. Again, this is a shattering of the ideals and ideas that are foundational to this country. The men who are Donald Trump's architects are no less radical than the German lawyers of the 1930s who sought to invent new law, new codes, new ideas for the explicit purpose of killing forever democracy in Germany. The Americans involved in this effort that the New York Times talk about are the radicals and the extremists, Jeffrey Clark, a former Justice Department official in the Trump administration, and Russell T. Vaught, 
According to the New York Times, during the Trump presidency, Mr. Vaught served as the director of the Office of Management and Budget, and Mr. Clark, who oversaw the Justice Department's civil and environmental divisions, was the only senior official at the department who tried to help Donald Trump overturn the 2020 election. Mr. Clark and Mr. Vaught are promoting a legal rationale that would fundamentally change the way presidents interact with the Justice Department. They argue that U.S. presidents should not keep federal law enforcement at arm's length, but instead should treat the Justice Department no differently than any other cabinet agency. They are condemning Mr. Biden and Democrats for what they claim is the politicization of the justice system, but at the same time, pushing an intellectual framework that a future Republican president might use to justify directing individual law enforcement investigations. That is not a new legal theory. That is the spine of dictatorship, of a totalitarian system where justice is the whim of a man, where the truth is what that man believes, no matter how fantastical or conspiracy-laden the nonsense that comes from his mouth. And patriotism in that system is genuflection to it, no matter what. That is a sick society. That is an evil society. That is a totalitarian society, and that is something that Americans have always been able to understand is a grotesquery, is a sickness, and something that abhors us. The suffering and suffocating of freedom. Anytime a fascist movement has ever taken power, it has successfully used this argument to topple democracy. It has said that there is a threat so grave, so great, so total, that it must be feared absolutely. And the remedy to the absolute fear, of course, is the bestowment of absolute power. Now, this is revealed in the New York Times story, but of course, without any historical context, without any clue offered that this is 101 for autocrats. Biden and the DOJ are baying for Trump's blood so they can put fear into America. And to quote, Mr. Clark wrote in his statement, quote, the Constitution and our Article 4 Republican form of government cannot survive like this, end quote. Mr. Vaught continued, quote, the Justice Department was ground zero for the weaponization of government against the American people. Conservatives are waking up to the fact that the federal law enforcement is weaponized against them, and as a result, are embracing paradigm-shifting policies to reverse that trend. Paradigm-shifting policies. That's the euphemism for it? Paradigm-shifting. Fascists love their euphemisms. The Germans called the gassing and murder special treatment part of the final solution. Well, it was all part of a paradigm shift, I suppose. The New York Times should be clear with its readers. Donald Trump is running for president in 2024 to end American democracy, and he is supported in that effort by a small minority, a cheering faction of weirdos, loons, conspiracy cranks, fascist extremists, some violent, some not, some weirder than others, 
but every one of them part of a toxic cabal that seeks to destroy American democracy as surely as these people gathered in Madison Square Garden in 1938 sought to destroy it then. Then they were called the Boond. Today they are called MAGA. It is the same thing. They seek the end of liberty in the name of an all-powerful leader who singularly and alone has the wisdom to deal with the threat that they tell us we must all fear. Quote, the FBI has become a political weapon for the ruling elite rather than an impartial law enforcement agency, said Kevin E. Roberts, the president of the Heritage Foundation. Again, nonsense. It is a conspiracy theory. It is no different than the bullshit you could find on a QAnon message board. Complete, total, unadulterated nonsense. But it has a political aim and a political motive. For whatever reason, extremist MAGA has turned its focus on the Federal Bureau of Investigation. New York Times story continues. On its most watched nighttime programs, Fox News has been all in on attacks against the Justice Department, including the accusation presented without evidence that Mr. Biden had directed the prosecution of Mr. Trump as the former president addressed his supporters on Tuesday night, Mr. Trump on the right and Mr. Biden on the left, the Chiron on the bottom of the screen read, quote, wannabe dictator speaks, end quote, at the White House after having his political rival arrested. Fox News is a cancer. Recently, it settled a almost $1 billion suit for lying. What it's doing is trying to incite civil war for profit, for money, for billions of dollars. That's what this is. And no doubt somebody will take Donald Trump up on it. Somebody will take Rupert Murdoch up on it. Somebody will take Lachlan Murdoch up on it. Somebody is going to act on the incitements to violence that spew forth from Fox News. What the New York Times story does is couch and disguise and obscure the real point of what Donald Trump and Jeffrey Clark and Mr. Vaught believe or don't believe in more precisely. They don't believe in America. Not democratic America, not free America, not the land of the free and the home of the brave, a place that John Kennedy and John Winthrop and Ronald Reagan all saw as the proverbial shining city on the hill, a place to be perfected and made more perfect, where all the eyes of the world are upon us. What Donald Trump is seeking to do is snuff out American democracy. That's what his speech at Bedminster was. It was a declaration of repudiation against the American Revolution, against the Declaration of Independence, against the Constitution of the United States. What Donald Trump is saying is a lie. What Donald Trump is saying is born from desperation born from an arrogance of belief that he could lie with impunity forever. But he cannot. His number will come due and is coming due. Understand this, though. No matter what smokescreen the New York Times uses to try to obscure the plain meaning of what is being said, trying to bound trying to seek a middle between democracy and totalitarianism that doesn't exist, trying to find a space 
and a framing for arguments that are explicitly about destroying American democracy and contextualizing that as part of some mainstream debate on an access that exists between two political parties. And therefore, because one believes this here and the other believes this there, that the middle is some weight point between the two positions, except none of this exists because everything is perfectly clear. Joe Biden stands for American democracy. Donald Trump stands for the proposition that he will be America's dictator, that he and his family will take as they please, we will serve as they direct, we will believe as they say, and we will speak as they please. No thanks. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our warning premium community. You can find out more in the description below.